I'm sick. Hey guys, welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I, I have a little scratchy scratch. I'm a little bit, I'm getting over a cold, so, uh, yep, that's, that's all I have to say. Today I thought I would do a little, like, books I've been reading video, books that, they're like, either kind of self help -y or self-development. Getting into a better mindset and headspace is always very helpful. I kind of just put together this list of books that I've been reading recently or books that I want to read or I have started reading. So the first book I want to talk about is, it's pretty popular, you may have heard of it, I don't know. It's You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Um, the full title is You Are a Badass, How to Start... Can I read? How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life. Sounds pretty, sounds pretty good to me. So the reason I like this book, first of all, she's really funny. Self-help books are a tricky area because the writer can make or break the message for me. So like, if the writer is too airy-fairy fluffy, like... Just listen to your inner consciousness and everything will be good for you and all your dreams will come true. And if they're just too serious, like I get where they're coming from, but I just can't, I lose focus, I can't pay attention. She's like funny and she has like a, a kick to her writing and I just, I really like her writing style, style. She's a really good writer and it's very easy to read and it's like funny. The thing with self-help books is like a lot of them have the same message, but the reason people keep rewriting them is because they have to say it in a specific way. Like, the way they say it is makes the book effective or ineffective, but at the end of the day, most of them are like meditate, law of attraction, stuff like that. But like she says it in a very effective way. My favorite chapter, basically it talks about um, like all of our stories, like stories, which is like basically the excuses we make for ourselves. The excuses we make for ourselves for why we're not doing what we want to be doing or why we're not already at a place that we want to be at. Basically, she says you need to get rid of your stories, and if I'm looking down, it's because I'm referencing a page. Okay. One of the examples she uses is, like, she calls this girl Sally, and she's like, if Sally's talking about how she can't meet a man because there aren't any good ones left, if Sally tells herself, like, she sucks at flirting, she never knows what to say to men, there's no good guys left, she's never going to find a man, blah, 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 that's her story. So that's something that's, like, holding her back from, like, getting the relationship she wants or whatever. There, this happens in every single facet of your life. It's not just relationships. It's with money. It's with, uh, like, platonic relationships, familial relationships, your health. Literally everything. You can have, like, a story in your head that's blocking you from being where you want to be in that area of your life. And Sarah basically says, like, first you need to, like, acknowledge what your stories are, and then you need to, you need to figure out what that story is giving you. Using Sally's example, by saying there aren't any good men out there, she doesn't have to take responsibility for why she hasn't met one yet, and like, she doesn't have to put herself out there, she doesn't have to get rejected, like, she can just stay home, and people don't really bother her for asking her why she's staying home and not going out on dates, because she's like, oh, there's no good men out there. You know, it kind of like, takes the pressure and the responsibility off of her. Since Sarah's basically saying you need to understand what your story is, understand why it's your story, and then get rid of it. So that you can be like, because, like, that's... Your stories are never true, basically, is what she's saying. Yeah, obviously she talks about a million other things, but that's, like, the most valuable thing I think is in this book, and I've read this book twice, so, like, I would know. The next book is Self-Care for the Real World by Nadia Narain and Katia Narain Phillips. They are sisters, because we are sisters. We stand together. On the very front of the book, it says... I want to give this book to everyone I know. Kate Moss. Kate Moss read this book. That's pretty cool. This book is great because it is so, it's so thorough and it literally talks about self-care in every single different situation. So if like you go to the chapters, it's literally like, first of all it's cute and it has this little like ribbon thingy, like don't you miss these? I feel like when we were kids, all the books used to have those, and now it's like, things aren't the same, you know? They have like the general self-care, like, love your body, there's nothing wrong with you. Food is powerful self-care, stuff like that. But then, what is up oh, my hair? Then there's also, like, when you're stressed, self-care in relationships, friends and family, finding your tribe, letting go. When your joy feels far away. Self-care in the workplace. Heartbreak. So it's really just self-care in every single th situation you can think of. 
it gives you like foods to eat and like things to do like it, it'll be like self-care when you're sick have somebody change your sheets oh this one was great this one was great I remember reading this okay there's one on like tie cutting this is in like the breakup uh, when your heart broken section and there's like a thing on tie cutting and she gives you like a little mantra thing and it's like whatever belongs to me I return to me and whatever is yours I return to you I send you away with love that's brilliant like I remember using that and it worked it worked geniuses these sisters are geniuses their parents did a great job Okay, I don't know why I'm yelling, but I truly recommend this book. All of my friends and I have this book. Yeah, get it. The next book that I have, I've started reading. I have not read the whole thing yet, but I love this woman. Her name is Gabrielle Bernstein. She wrote a book called The Judgment Detox. Gabrielle Bernstein, I don't know if you know her. She has a lot of TED Talks. She's like a great woman. She's an online uh, audiobook on YouTube as well. She's everywhere. She's done a lot of talks on the internet about like how to get your life together. Um, I really like her. I think she's I think she's great. I like the stuff she has to say. So that's why I bought this book because I already knew I liked her. Because I don't I don't buy books a lot. Either they're given to me or I get them at the library. I'm not one to to commit, you know, but she made me she made me want to commit. It basically just talks about how like judgment hurts us in every facet of our lives and like that's something we like we've been new but we been not acting on we know that judging other people is bad and judging ourselves is bad but we don't we like kind of just accept it as like a trick of the trade like something that is gonna happen but she kind of like goes deeper and like evaluates it there's a chapter where she talks about like all the different like there's like i don't know if they're like pressure points or chakras but you like tap into them like you, you like physically are gonna tap them and then she's gonna like give you this mantra and it's gonna like fix you I don't know but sounds pretty I'm I'm open to trying any of this stuff I'm very I'm adventurous what the heck sure she's just talking about like where our judgment stems from and it's kind of see what I was saying like self-help books they all overlap and they all have a similar message in a way but it kind of overlaps with you are a badass because she is kind of talking about how judgment is like one of your stories like because it's giving you something and how that something isn't worth it okay the next book I am going to talk about I picked it up not too long ago and it's called Unf yourself by Gary John Bishop he's just so blunt he literally says in the beginning of the book like if you're easily offended or if you're gonna take anything I say personally like re-gift this book to someone else do not read it because he's very blunt I I love people that are blunt I'm pretty blunt and I I am an advocate of tough love I love tough love I think it works I think being blunt works I think beating around the bush sometimes just doesn't work for me so like he's very like you probably do this and it's like this and this is what it does and stop doing it and I'm like but he actually has a different way of thinking about a lot of this stuff there's a chapter called I am willing he's saying like everybody says that they want this and they want that they want a million dollars they want to have abs they want blah 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 and he's like okay like you can want all that stuff and you can totally get it but are you willing are you willing to wake up at 6 a.m. and go to the office early and stay late and work weekends and not see your family as much to become a millionaire like are you willing to be a millionaire in the aspect of what you have to do to get there as opposed to are you just willing or are you just willing to have the end result like are you willing to do the work to get where you want to be basically and then you think about the answer and if the answer is yes then it kind of keeps you accountable because then you have to do it like you have to do the work that's just that and then you need to stop complaining and you need to stop being like oh well why am I not a millionaire yet well you weren't willing to do the work it's very like cut and dry like point blank blunt and then it's like you can think about it and you can be like no like I want to spend more time with my family like my family is more important than being a millionaire and then the answer is just no you're not willing to be a millionaire <laughs> like and then that's just that and then you need to stop like complaining about it that was like very powerful to read because like not a lot of people put it that way you know people make it seem like a lot of good things that happen to other people are just luck which sometimes it is but it's usually paired with some kind of hard work in some way shape or form that's the biggest thing I've learned from this book so yeah I'm gonna get into a couple of books that I have just acquired and haven't really started reading yet these are not like categorized as self-help books like these are just things that'll like make you woke and like just smarter okay just better just read them 
The first one is why I'm no longer talking. And then in, in white letters on a white page, which is a metaphor of its own, to white people about race. I actually bought this a while ago, but the woman who wrote this started with a blog post that blew up called Under the Same Name, Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race. Oh, it's by uh, Rennie Edo Lodge. She just is super intelligent and knowledgeable about like the system. She lays it out in a way that it's very cut and dry. This is where we started. This is the bad history that happened and this is how it affects the present. And then it goes all the way to like current issues. This is definitely something I need to read. This is something everyone should probably read, but I know a lot of people won't read because of the title. Um, but don't be offended by the title. Like all I'm saying is if everybody read books like this, there would be less of a problem. But I'm not naive enough to think that a lot of white people are going to read this book. I mean, some people might out of curiosity, but you know, a lot of people get offended by titles like this. Just like, you know, people get offended by the words Black Lives Matter and think that we're discluding white people, which is not the point. Because we're not. <laughs> you know, we, it's a journey, it's going to take us a while to get to equality, I understand. Like, I'm, I'm, my seatbelt is buckled, like I'm down for the ride. We'll get there when we get there. But this book would help us get there. So if everybody read this, that'd be really cool. Next book I'm reading, it's actually a collection of essays, but it's like put into a book. And this one is amazing. Roxanne Gay. And uh, it's called Bad Feminist. I've seen her around a lot. I've seen her like all over social media and like YouTube and stuff like that. And everybody says she's like a god. She gonna change my life. I just want to be like stronger and bolder in my opinions and in my in my activism. I want to be stronger and bolder in my activism and I think reading this book will give me um, more of the courage to do that. So yeah, this is, I'm going to read this book. So that is it for this video guys. Pick up those books if they interest you, don't if they didn't. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.